Okay, so as you just saw, if I try to register the same email, it seems like the validation is being triggered, but we don't get back a response from the server. And that's really because we are not wrapping the async call in a try catch. So to avoid the issue that we're getting right now, and in this case, we're getting an unhandled promise rejection warning. What we could do is we can simply just wrap everything in a try catch. But ideally what I'd like to have is a wrapper function, which we can call, let's say, catch async. And we're going to wrap our effectively controller function with that utility catch function. So what I'll do is I'll switch back to the terminal and instead of the middleware folder or directory, let's create another one. We're going to call this errors.ts. Let's make sure that we export it. So everything from errors will be exported. All right. So inside of this file, we're going to export a const of catch async. So this will be a function that takes in a handler. In fact, this will be a request handler from express. A request handler essentially is just a function that takes in up to three parameters, including request, response, and next. So now this handler will return another handler, which will be a function, again, an arrow function, which will take in the request, the response, and next, or we can simply call them arcs. We're going to take those arcs and we're going to invoke the original handler with the arcs. And now to be specific, so these arcs once again are request from express, response, and next function like this. But the difference now is we're going to also tack on catch with the args at index two like this. So what is this going to do? Well, it's going to take the handler, right? So the handler effectively is going to be the controller function that we're passing in over here right? Once it takes that handler, it's going to return another function. And so another handler, which will be a function taking in the request response and next function. And it's going to invoke the original one that we passed in tagging on a catch at the end. So this catch will effectively call the next function argument with the error. So in fact, what this does in effect is it takes in the error and it calls next on that error like this. And of course, next is essentially this next function over here. And that's why we're referencing it with the arguments at index two. So let's import catch async. And now we should be able to handle the errors. So right now, if we try to run the same curl command, so at least we get a response. Now, of course, it says invalid email, but we're still getting an HTML payload. Now to go around that, so what we can do is we can go to express JS documentation and let's go to getting started FAQ. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add two app.u calls at the end of our middleware in app.ts. So I'm going to add that and I'm also going to add this one over here. So the first one is going to handle the 404 error. So this is just so that if we get a route that we can't match, we're going to send back a response. So for example, res.json with a message of not found. Okay. And I'm going to pass in an error function, but in this case, we do actually have to take in the next parameter. And now for the next one, this one will actually handle any errors that occur in the application. So this will handle 500 errors or database connection errors if you couldn't connect to the Redis instance, for example, so stuff like that. So this will be an instance of error. Request will, of course, be a request from Express. So let me just import them. Response as well as next function. Again, for the 404, we'll send in a status of 404. Let's make sure we do that because by default, it's going to be sending a status of 200. But for the 500, we'll send a status of 500 with a message of message internal server error. And this will be JSON, of course. Okay, so if we try to run this again and we get internal server error, and this is not quite right because we're getting back a status of 500 because it thinks that the validation error is something that's broken at the application level, which is incorrect. But at least if we do, let's say, curl localhost 3000 slash um, unknown, we get a 404. In fact, if I do curl dash V, we're getting a 404 status. So I think what makes sense to do in this case is because in register, we're going to be calling the validate async function a lot. We could, of course, again, wrap it with a try catch and we could catch the error, right? And we could send back a customized response, right? Or just the error itself. And this will work, except we're going to also have to do the same thing for the case when the user already exists. So again, there's going to be a lot of duplication of try catch. So I think what we're going to do instead is we're going to create a utility function. So let me undo what I've just done and let's go to validation. So instead of our index, I'm going to export everything from a new file I'm just about to create. So let's call this one joy. And this one will just have utility extensions for joy. So let me touch a new file. So inside of validation will create joy.ts. Okay, so instead of that file, what we're going to do is we're going to export const validate. So we're going to create a helper validation function. And then instead of this function, we're going to do a try catch. So we're going to try to taking in the schema 
which is going to be object schema from joy and also taking in the payload which will simply be an object or any we're going to try to call an await with schema dot validate async passing in the payload and also passing in abort early set to false so that we continue to validate even if the first field fails okay so we're going to make this async and inside of the catch we can throw in an error passing in the exception so back in register if i do an import of validate we can simply call in validate passing in the register schema and that should be it so this will cover the case when let's say the email is misspelled still this isn't going to quite work because we are catching that error with a status of 500 so to be able to differentiate between different statuses we can actually introduce custom errors so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new folder let's call this one errors and inside of errors let's touch a new file so let's just do index.ts and let's just close other files for now so inside of this new file i'm going to define a new error and we're going to call this one bad request so this is going to extend the base error and it's going to take in a message we'll default to bad request we'll call in super with the message so invoking the parent constructor and i'm also going to set this set status to 400. now i'm going to get a warning in typescript so to go around that i'm going to create an abstract class which will be http error extending the base error and I'm going to define a public property of status which will be a number and again I'm going to tell TypeScript that it's going to be initialized in the derived class and then the bad request is of course going to extend that HTTP error so if I do that that should alleviate the issue so I'll do an export of that class so back in our validation so let's go to validation joy instead of throwing an error I'm going to throw bad request all right so once that's done if I go back to app.ts in this case I'm going to try to do error.status instead of 500 and i'm also going to try to do error.message like this so if the status doesn't exist so we're going to do if the error doesn't have a status we're going to simply console log the error stack and we're going to say that this error is of type any just to avoid the warnings so now if i open up the readme and i copy the payload let's say i'm going to paste it in and i'm going to omit the password confirmation if we send that in we get the validation error so we don't get the internal server error instead and let me also do dash v to make sure this status is right and this time we get a status of 400 bad requests what you could also do instead of bad requests is you could also send 422 unprocessable entity but for the time being i'm gonna also come back here and instead of throwing a generic error i'm gonna throw in a bad request error okay so if i try to put in the full payload so password confirmation i do secret 12 and we get invalid email so the difference now once again if i do dash v we're gonna get a status of 400 which is much better than 500 all right so this is pretty much it now the only thing i'm going to do for this file is i'm going to actually take out these functions so i'll take this one and i'll put it in middleware errors so I'm going to export const internal server error okay, and I'm going to export that and use this in here so now we don't need the type hints and I'll do the same thing for this function as well so let's put it in right over here export const not found okay we just have to be careful to put these two functions on the application instance and not at the router level All right, so let me add the type hints request response and next function so we're gonna put in not found and also let's just call this one server error like this okay and it's gonna be imported from middleware all right so that's basically it so it seems like everything is okay so let's just do another test so let me do curl on localhost 3000 slash foo dash v so we get a proper status of 404 and we also get a proper message of not found and once again if i go back to my readme if i try to run this once again we're gonna get invalid email that's because the email is already taken and we get a status of 400 and we also get the proper message once again so that's been error handling but of course we're not done yet because as i mentioned before if we do database.users.find you're gonna see that the password of the user is stored in clear text which is really bad so we're gonna tackle that issue in the next video so i'll see you then